whoa, we're hot and back and it's lit and it's amazing. Absolutely. You know, almost as amazing as I am your host. Tom McKay for 3D Politics Live right here on Facebook. I got two Davids, the most important Davids in Oklahoma, David Oldham and David Van, uh, one with Constitutional Grounds and the other with SoonerPolitics.org. We got a lot to talk about tonight. A riveting testimony today all day long. If you've got a job, you probably missed it. Uh, but if you're self-employed, by golly, you were there all day long. We're going to talk about the, speech, the impeachment style <laughs> inquiry. It's not an impeachment yet. They haven't even <laughs> voted on it. But it's impeachment style. And uh, we have the tribal compacts, which personally I think that's probably the most important story of the, the night. It's Oklahoma. It's local. And it's, it's critical now. Uh, the tribal compacts about gambling yeah. in Oklahoma yes. and the discussions with Stitt. And then there's a story that uh, from Sooner Politics, yeah. the Oklahoma earthquakes is just Absolutely. really fascinating. I, I yeah. only tonight I'm learning the difference between fracking and the injection of the uh, salt water back in. We're going to learn about that tonight. Yeah. Female judges, you got to, you know, hat tip to the female judges. At least it's one. <laughs> <laughs> At least one. The girls really know how to stick it Maybe. to the girls. Uh, <laughs> so there she yeah, maybe. So anyway, it seems like the there's a female judge that might be willing to hold a female sex abuser uh, accountable. And then there's a couple of just horrible stories. A UPS Florida driver shootout. There was a, a jewelry store heist in Florida. And uh, once again, the cops are playing man from uncle coming in, blazing guns like it's a movie. Uh, and, uh, and then also... A really horrible story out of Fayetteville. Uh, ambush of a cop right there in Fayetteville. Shot him execution style in his uh, car. Uh, this, I'm sure this story has more coming out because it just happened yesterday or the day before. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure there's more to start about that. But uh, comments on the impeachment. Anybody? Because oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait till we get to the Senate. <laughs> I just can't wait. It's going to be, oh, man. Oh. Well, it, I, I think isn't it isn't it wait until the other shoe drops yeah, because yeah, yeah. because yeah. at this point we have only seen the one uh, well orchestrated shoe and they won't let anybody see the other shoe. The best part um, about it for me is that the Democrats are just clamoring to talk about constitution, the constitutionality, the founding fathers, original intent. My God, this is the greatest thing. Well, it was like happened. it was like when I when I was the elector and all of a sudden everybody wanted to talk about the Federalist Papers <laughs> and the Constitution. They had no clue as to what they were talking about. You should have seen his emails. Oh, he was getting that, 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 that. He, he comes <laughs> a meeting afterwards and he showed his big stack he said now you see this all of these are exactly the same email <laughs> sent by like 300 people oh it was more than that because i i got over a thousand pieces but that was nothing the guys down in texas one guy got over a hundred thousand pieces of, of mail yeah electronic and, and oh yeah snail mail yeah but but they were and they were all the same thing Mm -hmm. More variations on the thing. Yeah. So. I wish that the Democrats would defend our country as strongly as they defend the Ukrainian country. Oh, I know. I Isn't mean, that amazing? Wow. Yes. It's, it, it's, well, several things. First off, let's remember, they, they're tyrannical with our money mm -hmm. and, and with our rights. Mm -hmm. And yet they want us to think that somehow they are defending our rights and our money. I mean, our Ukrainians interests. are dying. I mean, wow. We got to get busy. Well, a couple a week. Yeah, every, <laughs> a couple a week. And, and you know, in the war, uh, there's 10,000 of them that a couple a week. Yeah. And and it's like, okay, the numbers are yeah. in Congress. I can't figure it out, you know. You know, everybody wants to call themselves a constitutionalist. You just can't figure out which constitution you're <laughs> referring to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of seems like the Soviet constitution. Yeah. I liked it at one point. CNN panned the camera over to Goldman right before, according to the script, uh, that, that they referred to, the council referred to Goldman. So, I mean, it's like if you've studied television production, uh, you can see the foreshadowing of the script. Oh, and yeah. So, oh, right. so the guy, the council's talking, and the camera knows they're going to go to Goldman, so the camera pans over to Goldman, and then council references, we're going to go to Goldman. It's so clearly scripted. It's amazing. Yeah. I wonder, though, about the DACA kids. Could they potentially be you know, shipped or immigrated to the Ukraine to help them? Because I know the DACA, <laughs> the DACA kids are supposed to help us by just simply immigrating here. Maybe they can go to the Ukraine. I just, it's a, 
<laughs> just a concept. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Also, the, the other thing that is hinging on this deal is that Trump needed dirt on what? His political rival. Well, Joe, well, that's supposed Joe Biden. That's the, that's the that's the narrative. But if he wants dirt, let me let me put it this way: If Joe Biden and his son have nothing to hide, what does he care if we look up the skirt? I mean, right, Elizabeth well, Warren? Well, if you got nothing to hide, who cares if we look? So, an, mm -hmm. a, an investigation into corruption to the Democrats equals an immigrant yeah, as a Democrat, okay. as a investigation into Biden. Okay, but Stid himself, I Stid. Schiff, Schiff himself is guilty of the very thing that he says that Trump is guilty of. He's digging up stuff on Trump to help the next election for the Democrats. Yes. Well, and it's always hypocrisy. Yeah. You know, Trump can't do it, but we can. Um, he he can't do it, but we can. Um, sure. You know that sort of a thing, and it it just it, it's infuriating the. The double standard. Well, we talk about it every week. And that's Literally. another thing. Every incumbent, every elected official leverages the power they have in office to win their next election. Hello! Well, but there's there's even more than that. It's it's the there's there's a fine line between duty mm -hmm. and uh, and doing what uh, will get you elected. Yeah. And quite frankly, doing your duty is the best way to get elected. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in this particular case, he knows that there are problems in the Ukraine, and he has he has some some power to get something done over there. Yeah. So, why wouldn't he, and wouldn't that be a good thing, uh, especially when we're about to give him $400 million? Yeah, uh, and, and, you know, and the corruption in the Ukraine that Trump's referring to is much bigger than what happened with this, you know, brat kid of Joe Biden's. It had to do with way more than that. It had to do with Ukraine or uranium sales. It had to do with how uh, Ukraine was trying to influence the election for Hillary Clinton. The, the Democrats have admitted through the process of this pretend impeachment inquiry that to study corruption is to study the Bidens. If you look into corruption... Yeah. It equals Biden. They yeah. said it over and over and over again. Right. Biden and Ukraine equals corruption. And yeah. to look at Biden is to look at corruption. Yeah. And if you look at corruption, you're looking at Biden. It's, mm -hmm. it's simply been, the point's been made by the Democrats. Yeah. And also, another thing that I think is funny is uh, the, the boomers. Remember the OK Boomers comment? This mm -hmm. whole ploy yeah. of being afraid of the Russians goes all the way back to the 60s. It's a pitch to the boomers. Anybody who is 70 and older is going to continue to believe, yeah, we always were at war with the Russians. <laughs> the old, you know, <laughs> so duck and cover, said. duck and cover, that's a, that's a Russian fear-mongering technique. Okay, they've been playing this game for 100 years, all right? Since the Democrats, since LBJ off JFK, they've been playing this game, mm -hmm. all right? So he offed him, huh? Oh yeah! In fact, that was a uh, the uh, actually the Russians did their own investigation of the Daily Plaza assassination, and they came up with that same conclusion that LB. So the Russians agree with me, which means what am I? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you must be a bot. <laughs> <laughs> Again, they talk about the money. People, I noticed on uh, not that I'm a troll. But when I, <laughs> not, the <laughs> one, not that I'm not one. I'm either confirmed or denied. But the fact is that the trolls today on social media, we're talking about the money where even people on my side who don't agree with the impeachment inquiry, uh, they're like, oh, we're spending so much money. Fine, fine. I've never heard this much discussion about the Constitution, constitutional principles, and what the rule is, and what the law is, well, and how it should be applied. I've, you know, I've never heard so much... Uh, talk about, well, talk claiming the Constitution, but uh, as always, there is virtually nothing actually constitutional being discussed. But we are discussing the Constitution, and the, the, ra the, the just the unwashed out there who never pay attention to mm -hmm. politics are hearing topics and discussions about the Constitution and the deeper meanings um, of what the founders meant. Well, I'd, I'd be interested to hear where there's any been any um, 
form of facts toward the Constitution shared in anything that's been going on okay. in Congress. Uh, like, uh, just, just because the name has been used. It's kind of like Christianity. You know, the, yeah. the name is used and bandied about all over the place, yep. but then you get right down to it, and it's like, well, that ain't Christian. When the apostles <laughs> came to Christ. <laughs> that's not constitutional, and that's what I'm getting at. Not to speak like a reverend or anything, but when the apostles came to Christ and said, hey, there's these other dudes out there, you know, casting out uh, demons in your name, and what did Christ say? Right. Don't worry about it. And he, <laughs> and he, and he, yeah. So we're talking about the Constitution. Who cares what the facts are? We are <laughs> discussing what is legal according to the Constitution. We're discussing what the Founding Fathers meant. Who cares what's being presented? We're literally talking about it. Uh, uh, when Clinton was impeached, what were we talking about? Oral sex. Yeah. Okay? I mean, at least the Democrats are referencing the concept of constitutional law. Right? I mean, we're talking about well, the parts no. of it that they could say yes. They're, 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 just, they're picking and choosing what yeah. they want. The part, the part which means they, they like. are picking some parts of the Constitution and talking about it. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the investigation well, on Biden, uh, uh, the investigation of corruption wouldn't be a problem if Biden wasn't dirty. Yeah. That's the bottom line. If yeah. Biden was clean, well, we wouldn't even be talking about this. Yeah. They're just circling the wagons to protect Biden. Anything else on the impeachment? The point about the money was we want to spend money on these types of uh, inquiries because it brings to the forefront what is important in the discussion that we are literally debating the meaning of the Constitution. If that can't please you, Olam. Well, I hope that it will, that, that we will get somebody who will actually promote, promote the actual Constitution. Of Have just you not talking heard about any of the Republicans today in a nine-hour conference? Oh, well, I've been so busy. Nine working. I did not hours. The did not get to listen to it nearly as He was busy paying their salaries. The Republicans <laughs> are knocking it out of the park. I mean, they are literally being as polite as they can. If you've never seen the movie Who Killed Liberty Valance, it's time to watch it again. And the okay. person who is the lowest behavioral actor sets the tone. You see that in Adler. Hmm. Mm. These people are not comporting themselves in the way. They're ignoring points of order. He's banging the gavel at one point where the Republicans say, you can bang it harder. It doesn't really matter. You know, the big thing is they come up with a, the, the, the Republicans will come up with a, a good, um, something that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And they immediately table it and just ignore it. Right. So, so it's like we make these rules, but we can always, we can always ignore them. And sure. anybody objects then um, we just table it and they can't do anything about it. Exactly. Well, so, the, the rules say what Jerry Nadler says they say. That's, well, that's, right. what, I, that's yeah. what I, from what little I was able to hear today, yeah. that's what I heard. <laughs> yeah. you know, on that issue too, by the way, uh, this uh, subpoenaing of phone records that went on the ship's yeah. committee and that, look, if you're an AT&T customer, isn't this comforting? That all Schiff has to do is say, hey, i got to dig up some dirt on my political opponents. AT&T, give me their records. And AT&T will do it, number one, and not even tell their paying customer that yeah. I just screwed you over and gave away all your privacy to the U.S. Congress. Well, and to try to flex yeah. in your direction, I mean, uh, uh, one of the guys on our team was, he, he bragged uh, on our team, on, on the Republicans' side of the aisle, was saying, I wrote the Patriot Act. Well, I mean, you know. <laughs> so that's. I your, like to tell you said that. Well, to your unconstitutional uh, comment right. that right. all of these rules based on an unconstitutional concept of the Patriot Act, because that's uh, the, we are living in in the uh, in the fallout of the of the Bush's decision to pass the I, Patriot. Act. I couldn't be happier that they used the Patriot Patriot Act and the NDAA. Against President Trump, yeah, I tell, could tell not us be what NDAA happier. is. NDAA is the National Defense Authorization Act, gotcha. which is the 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 follow-on to the Patriot, and Act. that's what empowered the what we call the FISA courts. Correct. Right. Because well, it started with Patriot Act yeah. and then was followed on with right. The, because the, with the FISA courts, uh, you get screwed over on just some rumor, and that's what happened. And what does FISA stand for? 
Uh, First caller at six six three. My biggest point about uh, the impeachment hearings and people concerned about money, and you'll you'll notice anytime there's a Republican in charge, the Democrats start screaming about the deficit. And I don't mind to spend the money. Spend the money. We're the wealthiest nation ever on the face of the earth. Let's spend the money. Save the representative republic. I don't mind to spend the money. Well, save the republic. If you're here right now, just joining in, I'm Tom. I'm your host right here on 3D Politics Live. Amazing host. I'm the most amazing <laughs> host because I'm the only one here. I got two Davids. I got David Van, David Oldham. And we're going to move on to the gaming compact. To me, I think this Absolutely. is easily the most important story in Oklahoma right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. Gaming compacts are crony capitalism at their worst. This is a story from... December 7th of this year, Sooner Politics. Seven. Any time a government uses physical force to deny a right to some for the benefit of a favored few is a grave threat uh, to freedom. For most of Oklahoma statehood, gambling was banned completely as a vice. Mm -hmm. uh, but because of promised big windfalls in education funding, the, uh, it got passed, and now real corruption of civil rights is that the rest of us are barred from even applying for a license to start a competing business venture. Yeah, yeah, that's really what the compact is so about. So the, 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 the tribes have a monopoly on gambling. And that's exactly what the compact they, is about. And they demand that it remain their monopoly right. and nobody else. Somebody pointed out earlier that the state does the lottery. Yes, which so the state can do it. The they were doing the, the lottery they were doing before they initially got the compact, right? Mm -hmm. it was all together. Well, no, keep in mind the gambling was a two stage thing back in 1990. Uh, Governor Walters got elected with heavily influenced money from the tribes. In return, he gave them a bingo operation okay. compact. So, and then we had the lottery came not long after. Then we had horse racing, what's called paramutual betting for the children. Now, what is this, circa 1990? Yeah, early 90s. Okay. And then Walters got found out for the corruption, and he got indicted, almost thrown out. He somehow wiggled his way into getting a misdemeanor and promised he would not run again. And so... Then we had the midnight judge and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it was bad, you know. Yeah, but have we shared that publicly. That's no, we're, we're gonna have to. We're, we're gonna, gonna do that sometime. Yeah. yeah. So, but anyway, oh what then? What then ends up happening? Uh, we have eight years of Keating. Well, now the tribes really want to go full blown casino. Right. You know, incrementalism here, and so they got to get a Democrat in. The tribes don't get involved in politics unless there's something they want in return. Right. And they wanted full-blown casino gambling. And so they picked a guy, Brad Henry, who didn't even win the primary. Uh, he, Vince Orso won the primary, but they overcame him in the runoff with all this money. And then, you know, because he promised, okay... I will sign a compact with the tribes that says, I'll let you guys run casinos and nobody else. Right. This is Brad Henry? Brad Henry. Yeah. What's good for the tribes is good for Oklahoma. And, yes. <laughs> and I'd say, if I'm doing well, then you guys, Rescue, can do well. That's really what they're saying. It is about as narcissistic <laughs> as a statement. That, well, if I'm doing well, then Oklahoma's doing better than if I wasn't doing well. You know? That sounds vaguely religious. That sounds, that sounds like, you know, you got to give to the to the the word giver so that he prospers so that you can then yeah. prosper. Now we're right down into the rabbit trail. So, but, but this is, when we talk crony capitalism, and that's a dirty word at the Capitol now. It's weird. good. Yes, because it, it should, should because be. It is. It, it should be. And that's where the government makes a sweet deal that's going to benefit a favored corporate entity. It's not actually capitalism. Right. But, no, yeah, not at all. Right. And, and they make a deal like that. And anybody else who is trying to do it on their own without government help is now at a disadvantage because they're fighting against their own government, number one. And number two, their tax dollars are being used to prop up their opponent. Yes. You know, and so this got even worse. It said, no, not only are we going to tax you for gambling, but not him. We're saying, no, we're going to throw you in jail if you try to run a, a, an, thing. an office pool. Right. But we're going to let these other people do it. And now, 
this is being done not based on economics. It's not being done based on which neighborhood or which county you live in. It's what ethnicity you are. Right. And because only the established and recognized tribes that happen to be in Oklahoma are allowed to do this. So yeah. no, no amount of, this is from the student politics yeah. uh, side, no amount of taxation can make this type of compact just or consistent with civil rights. Right. Uh, the no. U.S. Constitution's 14th Amendment demands that state and local governments extend equal protection of civil rights under law for all citizens. Imagine, yes. this makes the point uh, quite well, imagine if our former Jim Crow laws barred black Oklahomans from owning and operating car dealerships, grocery stores, or taverns. Yeah. Imagine the outcry. Yeah. yeah, because only Indians get to do this one thing, uh, you know, well, that's... And, and this is, this is a, a sticky problem constitutionally, because the, the claim is that they can do it because they're, they're sovereign nations. <laughs> and, and Totally dependent so, on so the federal government. Well, not so only that, government. but here's the problem. <laughs> Article 4 of the, the U.S. Constitution expressly forbids states to enter into treaties. Yeah. And a compact is literally a treaty yeah. if the tribe is a sovereign nation. Yes. Now, if they are fellow citizens with us, which is literally what they really are, right. but if they are citizens with us, then we all have the same rights. Otherwise, we yeah. are not created equal. Right. They are created superior because... You know, of their and ethnicity. Welcome, and, Jim Crow. And therefore, we are at a disadvantage just for being um, of you a know, different, different ethnicity. ethnicity. Yeah. And, and that is completely counter to everything yeah. that we have ever had in the form of law in the United States of America. From what I understand in my readings, that in the history of Oklahoma back in the early 1900s, uh, the, they only added the Indians to the population count in order that they could get statehood passed. They wanted to become a state. They didn't have the population. They added the Indian count as population so that they could become a state and gain the protections of the United States. Well, and, and I say the tribes had to give up their claim of territory as well, in which they did. Because keep in mind... The Indian tribes wanted to form their own state in eastern Oklahoma with a state called Sequoia. And, uh, and that was rejected in 1906. And then one of the lawyers for the tribes, uh, Alfalfa Bill Murray, he you know, got with the western Oklahoma ranchers, farmers, homesteaders, and says, let's all go in as one united Oklahoma territory becoming a state. Right. And the tribes will give up all claim to tribal land. And that's what's happened there. And we're living and now, in that confusing legacy right yeah, now. Yes. Correct. And, and so, yeah, that's what's going on. Now, there's other states where there's still Indian reservations. Growing up in Minnesota, it's a whole different world dealing with right. the tribes in some of these other states. South Dakota, like, you know, the Rosebud right. Indian Reservation, right. things like that. You feel like you're going into third world country. You know, Oklahoma's done a, gone a different course, and by far... Our tribes have prospered way beyond yes. what they have in almost any other state. Uh, but and again, we're more civilized. Yeah, but <laughs> but again, it's now all of a sudden where it's convenient. We want to go back to these jingles like we're a sovereign nation. Well, crap! I'm a sovereign yeah, citizen. I got sovereignty <laughs> all over me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just no. You know, you are what the rest of us are. We are all American citizens. Well, that's true. The the real thing is that whether or not uh, Indians can retain some measure of um, of treaty rights because mm -hmm. it was given into per perpetuity mm -hmm. uh, forever, mm -hmm. uh, though that was the the treaty at the time. Uh, whether or not, and, and I'm not here to argue whether mm -hmm. or not we should be separating from those treaties. Right. That's not the that's not the point. But the point is that it does not matter whether you are an Indian, a white, a Mexican, an American, I mean, a, uh, an Asian or a, mm -hmm. an Arab pick, or whatever. Pick a card, any card. It, we all, if we are Americans, we all have the same exact bucket of rights. And no one has anything superior to another. And anybody who thinks that they do or acts that they, like they do are actually committing treason. 
Because what they are doing is they are literally committing civil war against the very foundation and constitution of not only the United States, but our, our state mm -hmm. and every other state in the mm -hmm. Union. Because we all have some form of a Bill of Rights or an acknowledgement. We certainly are all yeah. subject to the, the Bill of Rights in the U.S. Constitution. And, um, and therefore, they are literally attacking that form of government. Yes. And, okay. and that law, so that's, that's, that's the real problem. Yeah. That's I, I want to move to a different angle on the same story. Yes. So do you have something in mind? Yeah, like and, and here's where it, it comes to. Uh, Governor Stitt said over the end of last week, he says, as of January 1st, uh, the casino is going to be operating illegally. Well, technically, no, they won't be operating illegally, but any claim to exclusivity will be null and void. And to be honest with you, that's where I want to go on this. I'm yes. not trying to shut down a casino. I'm trying to say, no, let's have open all American enterprise Yes. Free enterprise competition. Let everybody go out there and compete equally. Let's turn let's turn Oklahoma into an opportunity zone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. And, and that's that's really where we need to go with this. And my civil rights are not for sale at any price. Great. And I, I want you to know that legislature. I want you to know, Governor Stitt. My civil rights are not for sale. What about your rights? And listen, <laughs> nor, nor and, are they, and listen, it's not up to a majority vote of the people or of the legislature. Absolutely. A civil right is something that's guaranteed. And it's unalienable. And unalienable. You cannot be separated from and, and it. So by, by just just even if somebody punishes you for doing it, it mm, still belongs to yeah. you. So yeah. anything short of just Opening it up for anybody to qualify and compete in mm -hmm. uh, is going to be deserving of a federal lawsuit on 14th Amendment grounds. Equal protection of our civil yes. liberties. Well, and I hope that Governor Stitt will um, will come to understand this. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that we've done it justice tonight, but I, I'm hoping I'm hopeful that he will come to understand this because we have an opportunity to, to actually. Um, open this up and actually have liberty on this, especially on this issue, complete and utter liberty. Yeah. Just remove the prohibition yeah. and all of a sudden everybody yeah. is equal and anybody can build up. No, and here's where, it's, here's where it's important, Tom, because this doesn't just affect the gaming industry. What's happened is this has become a predatory tool used to go after other entertainment venues. Uh, I live yeah. down by the ORU campus, the Maybe Center Foundation, brought in a lot of revenue and, and uh, university benefited from it by hosting concerts at the Maybe Center. I mean, I don't know, one of, gosh, the ones who used to have here. Frank Sinatra had one of his last concerts here. Mm -hmm. You're not seeing any of that anymore there because they're run at the casino. River Spirit is right across the street. Exactly. <laughs> and it's being run as a loss leader. And I tell you how this works is because you got to walk past all of the slot machines to right. go to the concert. And that's number one. Number two, down the street from River Spirit, there used to be in 71st, a really nice cafeteria, uh, Luby's. Luby's isn't there anymore. You know why? One of the things they do sometimes down at River Spirit during the day for Seniors Day is they have a cafeteria and it was dirt cheap and Luby's couldn't compete with it. Oh, you know, to, and right. so, yeah, it, my friends up in Minnesota tell me the casinos there, the Indian organization. Man, this, you can't get that kind of a buffet smorgasbord. Well, uh, right. the power of the capital. Also, I know at the uh, Cherokee uh, Casino, uh, they own, uh, I worked there for a while, and they, they not only, there's a McDonald's and a Waffle House, but guess mm -hmm. who owns the franchise? Right. <laughs> The yeah. Cherokees own yeah. everything yeah. right there. Yeah, right. on that property. Yeah. Right. So they own the McDonald's, they own the so, smoke shop, and they own the Waffle House. Right, right. 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 and so it's harming other free enterprise businesses that were well, doing well, well and, and, and are no longer there. Well, and here's the thing. They wouldn't exist without the government protection. Yeah. With that government strong arm keeping everyone else out, Right. they don't they don't possess that power to be able to have grown so big to be able to offer the loss leaders. Yeah, and, and what was that uh, the lawsuits they went after Microsoft for the antitrust? Antitrust. And this is essentially what you've got, is an antitrust 
kind of situation that you're calling for is saying, hey, you don't let, by force of law, saying, the you know, government saying, no, we're only going to let these groups run these businesses. Right. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is, the antitrust, though, is, is a dodge from the real issue. The real issue was the government got involved and started denying people it the is, ability but, to participate. But, and then antitrust was, oh, now you're too big for your britches, and now you're, you're right. running roughshod over other people, so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna punish you a little bit. But if government hadn't done anything in the first place, then you would right. No, I, I agree with you, but I'm saying it's reached a point where it has that dynamic, just the same way they went after Microsoft back in 2000, uh, because they were using their operating system, which they controlled the whole market on, to try to promote their browser right. Right. and to the attempt of destroying Netscape Navigator, which, right. yeah, it's destroyed. It doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> um, but they got caught doing it, and there were big penalties they had sure. to pay. Now, whether you agree with that or not, I'm saying there is precedence in our court that you don't use your leverage of one thing to try to go predatorily after other markets in, in leverage. And I'm just saying this is what the courts yeah, have held. Uh, yeah. And if they're going to be consistent, now, Dave, you and I don't agree with that kind of ruling, but that's what the precedent right. is. Right. And, if, and if we're going to follow that, then we're going to say, yeah. The well, and are and the, quicker, the quicker answer rather than the court, it would be just open it up. Yeah. Right. You just right. free, give free everybody have the, the free idea of their rights. And <laughs> yeah. The idea of freedom is a lot easier. To so so the legislature, just, just make it free. yeah, no, the legislature has a choice here too, because you know what? The more business out there, the more commerce, hey, the more chance you're going to get more people. Las Vegas isn't just a few casinos. It's a whole metropolitan area that's based on yep. a, a particular industry. You know, what they've yeah. taught the children in the elementary schools in the last few years in Oklahoma is that the best thing for you kids is gambling and marijuana because <laughs> those are the two most important benefits to Oklahoma <laughs> right. Right. Mean, the lottery we're, kids. We're paying <laughs> education with, with, with by yeah. smoking pot and gambling. That's yeah. true. So that, that is true. More, well, more power to you. But, he, but mind you, they're vices if you don't have the license. <laughs> no, I, perhaps we should pay it with prostitution. Yeah. But mind you, they're vices if you don't have the license. No, I, perhaps we should pay it with prostitution. Yeah, okay. in, in this, this weekend, uh, I was watching uh, reruns of The Godfather, and they were talking about the drug industry. And at the time, back in the 30s, they said, okay, if we're going to allow it, just do it in the poor neighborhoods and the ethnic minorities, <laughs> not in the well-off neighborhoods. Right. You know, and uh, so... There's people that say, well, we shouldn't have gambling in Oklahoma. This is, I'm going back to the 90s here. But if they want to do it, well, then they can do it, but not us, you know? And so for our government to say, well, we won't get involved then, but we'll let the tribes do it. Well, you know, well, <laughs> see, that's the thing. It's <laughs> completely <laughs> arbitrary. And, uh, and it's like every, every prohibition licensure scheme. Mm -hmm. It's completely arbitrary, and somebody who deems themselves superior to other people or a group of people that do that um, decides, well, you know, you know, send it to the ethnics. Okay. And, you yeah. Know, you know, let let them die off from all. This okay. Stuff. Let, let's talk about the moral and ethical. Part. Hey, if you're just joining us, you're tuned in to 3D Politics. I'm your host, Tom McKay. I got David Van and David mm -hmm. Oldham here. We're working over the intricacies of the gaming compacts. Yeah, yeah let, let's talk about the morality, the ethical issue with gambling, because there's a lot of people who just think, well, Bible says it's a sin. Well, I haven't found the scripture, but <laughs> nonetheless, <laughs> I understand the principle. I don't gamble, okay? I, you know, right. I'm a teetotaler. Is, well, full disclosure here, well... Partial more. I'm not going to disclose all my. Life. <laughs> wow! <laughs> but got real intimate. Just <laughs> yes, I keep my clothes on. Uh, but here's here's the deal. If the government say no, we're morally opposed to gambling. Well, we will take a 25 percent of the cut. Then it's okay. Well, then, yeah. You know, it's it's <laughs> like we're financially invested, but we're morally Tom, opposed. Tom, I, I was talking to a friend of ours, Eric McRae, last night. I says it's kind of like my college buddy who was talking to a girl on campus, and he said, uh, to her, he said, "Well, would you have sex with the guy for a, a billion dollars?" And she says, "Oh yeah." <laughs> yeah. And he says, "Well, you want to come over to my house tomorrow night for twenty bucks?" And she says. 
Who do you think I am? He says, well, we already know what you are. I'm just Dickering Price. Oh, there it is. <laughs> right there. So I'm saying the government already has shot their yeah. argument about okay. morality and ethics with gambling. And it's a personal choice. Right. Right? Nobody's making it. Listen, I win a $2 jackpot every time I don't buy a ticket. <laughs> That's my choice. And I save 67 yeah. bucks every time I run a stop sign. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, the, uh, the, the gambling in Oklahoma, it, it pays for a lot of stuff, and that's why they want the money. Is that right? It does damage too, but yes, they Part of the money. reason that the, that the tribes have this favored institution of gambling is because we're kind of paying them back. Yes. Because we kind of came over here and we're admitting this, this agreement that makes the tribe special Oklahoma is kind of an indirect admission that we're going to pay you guys back by favoring you in a way that we don't favor anybody else. Well, but the thing is that, that the state doesn't have the right to, does not have the right or authority to enter in and do that kind but of The southern transaction. states during Reconstruction were uh, monitored by the federal government during that same thing for the, for the blacks because we're paying them back, too. Okay. But I want to say... So I'm saying, the, my point is, is yeah. that the reason we're into these discussions is because at one time it was a, the, we, we lived in the world of slavery and we had to pass the Constitution so that it would eventually fade away. Right. And then we lived in the world of the Reconstruction with the federal mm -hmm. government telling the states a little bit of business mm -hmm. until it faded away. And now we've had court cases that say we don't need these restrictions on mm -hmm. the southern states anymore for voting ID and stuff. Right. Okay, right. and now we're in the same position with the tribal compacts where we did this deal a long time ago to try to make it right because we're a holy and moral nation and we continue to try to make it right. And so now we are making it right with the Indians, but it's been there now. Yeah, so it's time right. to fade that out. Okay, and, and I'm saying... Uh, okay, do we get tax dollars from them? Yes, we do. We get, or well, don't call it tax dollars. We get an exclusivity fee from them. But, and, and what the numbers are, I don't know. But my work in mental health in, involves me being involved with an agency that got, uh, state government called Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services. Well, you think that's, you know, heroin addicts and stuff. No, do you know, it wasn't last year's budget, it was the one before... They spend, I think it was like $5 million on gambling addiction programs right. in the Department of Mental Health. So, yes, it is costing us money dealing with the gambling addicts. We've got former leader in the Senate, Rick Brinkley, yep. just finished a federal prison term because it was brought on by his gambling addiction at the casinos out in Stroud. Every time you go back and forth from the Capitol back to uh, to uh, Collinsville and Watson. And uh, that's what people tell me. Yeah, people in Stroud, they all know him at the casino there. He wouldn't go anywhere where people that he thought nobody knew him. That, but so, but I'll turn him out. Though. But you listen to Rick sometime. Rick's on social media and stuff. <laughs> listen to him. He's got a compelling story about just how powerful that addiction is. And so, yes... It has problems. Yes, it harms people, and that you know, I'm, I'm a liberty-loving American enough to know that hey, it's my decision that. But it does harm families. It does harm right. kids. Should not be just free to go do whatever they want in there. We got to protect our kids against exploitation. So you know, we we do have concerns. Well, but we do that. And the, here's the thing: you protect your own child against exploitation. Mm -hmm. It is not about government to protect us all mm -hmm. from exploitation in by by just prohibi prohibiting anything that could possibly be exploited. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and that's the problem is that's where they want to go so they can hopefully. I think it was Jackson Brown who said gambling can't take you anyway unless you already know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, so, let's move yeah. on from yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. anybody, yeah, that yeah. was a good little workover. At one point, I do want to revisit this concept because I want to get a good constitutional analysis on how a federal government can have a sovereign nation 
like the like the the tribes Ooh, or yeah, the government <laughs> or, or, or like the school government it is its own government it's mm. not a federal extension well it's you talking about the, the public schools? <laughs> talking about the public okay, schools. Well, yeah, we'll bring that up a, at another that's time. A, that's another yeah, one. And, that's a and, separate and analogy. I, I, I may want to do a, an in-depth interview sometime with uh, Chad Smith, the former uh, chief of the Cherokee tribe. When you and I were down at the SRLC back four right. years ago, I ran into him and right. we talked about a number of things. And, and Chad was very good and hospitable about, you know, and he's Republican, you know, in a lot of matters. But... Yeah, their mindset is very different on a lot of things than, oh, yeah. than the rest of us. And, and, you know, to close this out, my yeah. line is open for Governor Stitt if he wants to call me and talk about this compact thing. I'm also waiting on a call from the NFL, me and Colin Kaepernick, still <laughs> waiting. And I'm not going to say anything about it, but did you notice how the referees decided the game on the Cowboys? Uh, let's get on to this Oklahoma earthquake crisis. It's over. It is. Came and went, and I'm only learning today the difference between fracking and injection wells. Well, injection wells. On well, the, it, it, the injection waste disposal well. Okay, the story: the Oklahoma earthquake crisis is over. From a uh, Sooner Politics 128 of yeah. this year on mm -hmm. Labor Day weekend 2016, Oklahomans were furious. At 7 a.m., homes throughout most of the state were violently shaken by a quake registering near 6.0 on the Richter scale. The legislature did nothing to abate the quakes during the previous five years. In fact, they passed laws to prohibit counties from putting moratoriums on petroleum production activities. Yeah. State Representative Jason Murphy, a rep uh, a Republican Guthrie, reported on industry attempts to press OU President David Bourne to put a gag order on Austin Holland of the USGS Oklahoma affiliate. Yeah. Yeah, so explain it. Yeah, I talked to Jason about it. He was really troubled because his district is right up there, Guthrie area, mm -hmm. in the heart of the earthquake zone. Right. And there were all kinds of houses with damages, and there were structural damages, roads, bridges, infrastructure, you know, little stuff, but there was it was all over. Right. You know, and it just the lifespan of these buildings and infrastructure was damaged by it. And uh, he's upset because he says, you know, look, if we've got, you know, high winds and it's dry out and everything, the county can do a burn ban. But if we've got, you know, ground shaking like crazy, we can't tell people in the county, quit pumping more water down in there in those oil wells. Yeah. And so uh, that's what's going on. We found out people, now the environmentalists, Sierra Club and all of this, oh, it's that fracking. It's that fracking. Yeah, that's because all I ever heard. fracking to them is we are blasting rock to suck what little oil we can get in there between in the crevices. And that fracking is causing an explosion and an earthquake happening. Kind of like an atomic bomb, you know, shows up on the Richter scale. It had nothing to do with that. They definitely, in the in the media, I mean, I, mm -hmm. I the way I remember it is that whole fracking and injection was one yeah. process. Yeah. Well, there is there is fracking. There is injection wells, which mm -hmm. is part of the extraction process. And then there is waste disposal wells. Mm -hmm. And it's the waste disposal that was causing all the problems. That's where the high volumes were going in. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's the high volume of water mm -hmm. that is being injected at, at very high pressures. And at that, a rapid pace, too. Oh, yes. Extremely rapid pace. That was causing actually a lubrication of fault lines. Mm -hmm. And that's where you got the all of a sudden the movement. They would get enough lubrication... Things would shift, and it would shift to a point yeah. that the lubrication didn't hold anymore, and, and yeah. it would stop. But yeah. that's and, where you got your... Right, and the oil industry soon found out that the ideal landfill in the yeah. North American continent to dump all the salt water, because you can't put it in the stream, you know, EPA get all right, right. Yeah. And that was this Arbuckle Toxic formation. metals is okay, but don't yeah. you put that salt on. Yeah. The, it was our dry aquifer that they're yeah, putting yeah, up in there. This <laughs> Arbuckle formation. And so they're pumping in tankers full of this, you know, nasty, dirty, oily salt water from... Just real quick, tell tanks. people what the Arbuckle formation okay, is. Okay, well, it just was a dome of rock... That, it's a natural formation. Right. Oh, yes. That's over central Oklahoma... And it keeps our surface water, rainwater, and everything's up on one side. 
and all the oils down below, but we've been sucking that oil out for decades now, and we got a nice dome stadium in there that's several hundred miles wide, you know, and, and we're basically pumping, pumping, pumping into that. And all of a sudden, you know what? There's a limit what we can do here, isn't there? And But the problem was they weren't doing anything about it. I mean, what little bit, we didn't know. All we found was legislature saying, counties, you can't do anything about it. But at the same time, uh, Austin Holland with the Oklahoma Geological S Services, part of the USGS, he was like, man, I'm getting a gag order from David Boren because right. the office out in, uh, they're funded through the OU. It's an OU extension. Yeah, and so, uh, and then the Austin gets pulled in a room with Harold Ham, you know, uh, the big oil baron and stuff. And, you know, he's claiming that he's getting pressured. He eventually resigned. He couldn't mm. handle it, you know. And so, anyway, <clears throat> so finally that weekend, Labor Day weekend, that was a big weekend for me because, I mean, uh, and I write about it in student politics. I won't go into all the details, but um, when my article that morning went viral, and I mean viral like nothing I've ever done before or since um then you know i was really ragging on the corporation commission and i the other day oh I, yes yeah i ran well, into, they deserved it for yeah years now you know last spring i ran into bob anthony who's been on there for like 30 years you know and mm -hmm. i bob you know i appreciate you finally doing something publicly they announced this big moratorium and then the epa this is the obama administration agreed with what our corporation says we will follow your lead right. and we will get the tribes on tribal land because like osage county they osage indians kept all of their mineral rights and that so you know they had to get the federal government to make them comply with it and this was in uh beginning of september 2016 and then they did a symposium at tu that following week and, you know, it just, from that moment on, it's like the earthquake stopped. No, we had to do a lot of tweaking because we're figuring out, okay, well, that was a little too much. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, we had earthquakes. We had, you know, 2015, we had almost 900. That's more than two a day that are in exceedance of uh, 3.0 on a Richter scale. But well, then, in and an earthquake in Oklahoma, for all of you youngsters, didn't used to happen. No, I know. No, uh, in fact, I've had more earthquakes here than I had all growing up in yeah. California, where that was that California. Central. They know there's going to be earthquakes. Prior to 2009, the most earthquakes we've ever had registered in a year was three. Yeah, the most, and so. We really brought it down in yeah, I ran from the, three to eight hundred. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody do the math. What's yeah, eight eighty seven. Yeah. So, so um, but then I ran the numbers this year. USGS doesn't have them, but I came up with my own research using their uh, stuff. There's only fifty two so far this year, so that's about one a week that exceeds 3.0, nothing has exceeded 4.0. Keep in mind, 6.0 was what woke us up that famous Labor Day weekend. Right. So here's the deal. If your house has cracks in it, drywall cracks in it, yeah, it could have been the earthquake, and you know what, you're out of luck. You're probably never going to get reimbursed for right. it. The good news is the scientific uh, theory about the injection wells proved to be true as best we can tell. And uh, well, know, the, the, as evidenced by the fact that when they reduce pressures, yeah, the earthquake stopped. Yeah, <laughs> and we still are pumping our own salt water down into the ground, we're just not the landfill for the other states anymore. Right. Now, my brother actually has a waste management company or did up in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And when the horizontal drilling and fracking technology just opened up way more reserves up there. Uh, an oil production company from Houston come up because he had all his EPA licenses flashed, I won't say how much, it's my brother's business, but seven figures to him says, I need your license and the metal pole bar in here that you operate out of. And, they cut him a, and then a Houston trade magazine for petroleum said by this company says, 
We have the only licensed wastewater management company in 400 miles because they bought it from my brother, you know. And because up there, they don't have a place to dump it. They got to truck it to Oklahoma, or they used to, now they can't. Right. And right. so there are more expensive ways to break it down so it is environmentally friendly. Well, and that leads into what we need to talk about constitutionally mm -hmm. because... Uh, and 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 morally, mm -hmm. uh, which really are synonymous here. Sure. And Should that be. is that nobody has the right to pollute other people's property or the public space. No one has that right. Or to damage property. You Correct. hear that, folks? David Oldham is saying the government has a right to regulate this. Well, regulation, yes. Of regulation, oh not God. you live to see the day, no, folks. No, 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 no. no. Well, if, then, then you've you never, you have not been. I know, no, I'm teasing. No, because because, because, no, because, no, because no, it's, no, it's proper regulation, and then there's prohibition. Yeah. But the the thing is that 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 prohibition would only be uh, would a prohibition that would be wrong was that that you can't do something with your wastewater, mm -hmm. okay, to to make it clean again and then mm -hmm. deal with it. Uh, you just can't create it in the first place. That would be improper. Mm -hmm. Proper regulation would be you have to deal with it and you cannot pollute. Hey, we're, we're looking at chicken problems in eastern Oklahoma yeah, for right. the same problem. Right. They just let their waste go off into the rivers and people get sick because they go into the rivers after a rain. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and so, well, and proper regulation would take care of it. The state has so far not done what they're supposed to do, and they blame the feds yeah. because the feds have gotten involved mm -hmm. because of the fact that this rainwater is going into a uh, shared river um, between states, and so the feds have, have gotten involved. But the, mm -hmm. um, and, and that perverts the whole thing and slowed everything down, but really... Somebody needs to come down on the on the chicken farmers or the or the the oil producers and and hammer every single one that is polluting sure. public space. Yes, um, and and then causing damage outside of that. Yes. So everybody who was putting in at these high high pressures should be paying for all yeah. these earthquake damages. Right, um, right. So they are their their insurer. So Jefferson's axiom is true here, that the just powers of government exist in to the extent that they protect us from acts which are injurious to others. Exactly. You know, but if, it, if it's there's no victim there, then there's no crime. Correct. Yeah. The, 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 the argument could Jefferson be Jefferson didn't say it that way, I did. No, no, no. <laughs> but no, that if there's no if there's no uh, harm to others. You could you could argue that if there's harm to the the space, then yeah. there is harm to others because others can't use it. Yeah, you know, I tried um, to get Jefferson to see it that simply. He, just, <laughs> he, just, just, he couldn't pick wouldn't up the listen concept. to the reason at the time. Hey, <laughs> so, uh, on this particular <laughs> issue, before we get out of this issue, <laughs> uh, uh, find a couple of really great accumulative studies, uh, mm -hmm. two spreadsheets on Sooner Politics. Uh, dot org. Uh, the first sheet, uh, latest data on 2019 trimmers, right. and then the second sheet lists the top 25 quakes of this decade. You can find that information on Sooner Politics. Yeah, you know, I, I went through that list of the top 25 and said, oh yeah, I remember when that, I remember, I was driving home on Broken Air Express when <laughs> my, my Where were you? and said, did you feel that? And I said, no, I just thought it was Oklahoma Road. <laughs> Where were you? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, so it's, uh, you go down memory lane on that, but uh, it's, um, it, it's good. So yeah, all of these things, we also have them on our 3D Politics Facebook page, all the articles that we uh, mentioned. Two more stories to uh, finish up this evening. I'm Tom McKay, your fantastic host, 3D Politics. I've got David Van, SoonerPolitics.org, and David Oldham, ConstitutionalGrounds.com. Uh, we're going to move on to an exciting public school story, female <laughs> judges. It seems like female judges are potentially more capable for holding female predators responsible for their crimes. Yeah. I guess the guys are going easy on the girls. They are. <laughs> softies. So last week, a LaFleur, a LaFleur County judge sentenced a Pecola public school teacher to a total of 40 
years or zero for violating at least three boys sexually. I don't know what the average is there, but she's she's spending the 40 years uh, concurrently, yeah. not consecutively, so it's almost like a threesome. She's doing them all at the same time. <laughs> Uh, it yeah. says here that uh, so you know, there, there are three counts at 40 years. Was um, that yeah, two were 15 year sentences for actual rape, and then the other one was 10 years for a sexual act on a minor. Okay, yeah, it's just sexual like, act on a minor <laughs> concurrently. Yes. So, so in reality, she's only serving 15 years. Uh, unfortunately, that's what okay. it is looking like, okay. of incarceration, yes. Well, total of 40, so if she gets out of it at half, she'd spend 20. Yeah, but she's only going to no, spend 15. running concurrently, which means you got you got a 10 running simultaneously with a 15 and another 15. Is so that the literally whole Literally got 15 years and, and then yeah. time out for good behavior and yeah. parole... So she'd be so yeah. Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma's Attorney General's office broke the case last spring. She pled guilty last week rather than to continue to trial. This is a story from 12-8 this year. Just mm -hmm. Last week, a student, yeah. or, oh, gee, yesterday, a student, uh, and here are, uh, here's the decade, three bullet points. A student at Smithville Public Schools in Smithville, Oklahoma, told police in 2010 that Barnes, Janet K. Barnes, the 44-year-old school teacher uh, asked him to have sex and sent him nude photos over four months. I'm thinking, you know, the quickest way to have sex with me is don't send me your pictures. <laughs> uh, the boy who said he Well, oh, she was much younger than I bet she was. She was in her 30s. <laughs> and so was the boy. He, uh, he, the boy said he felt like Barnes was stalking him and also said she exposed herself to him. Mm -hmm. Uh, in uh, 2012, Barnes also pleaded guilty in McCurtain County. She gets right around district court to outraging public decency involving a student younger than 16. Barnes was given a nine-month suspended sentence and had to pay more than $400 in fines and court costs. The judge also issued her a no-contact order with the student. That's a good one. Just pull through and we'll bring it out. Uh, Barnes pleaded guilty in August 2012 also to violating a protection order, but received no jail time. So you can see yeah. uh, they don't enforce the law, they don't enforce the law, they don't enforce the law, and they continue to and, let it slide. And they let her continue being a public school teacher in Oklahoma Public Schools. Fairly amazing. <laughs> and so that's the best part of the whole story. So, but, I mean, uh, no, I mean, the, the thing is, I mean, if you've watched, ever watched the show, you know how badly I hate the public school system on yeah. numerous levels for numerous mm -hmm. things. But the um, but the point is that, that how does an organization get away with keeping a, a convicted sexual predator of, of underage mm -hmm. children uh, a school teacher and around children? I think part of it is because they have, she has, she doesn't have a a protective order uh, prohibiting her from being around, you know, school like yeah. like most um, most uh, predators predators <laughs> would, would, would have. The, and it's it's interesting. And, and now, mind you, I don't necessarily agree with the with with these decency laws and things like yeah. that. The 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 responsibility for for protecting the child. And, and their and their uh, moral health is the parents, mm -hmm. and so so I have a problem with a, a, a bunch of things in this. No wonder you left California because <laughs> California would not let you be responsible. Well, no, and they don't let you parent. Yeah, um, but but you know, from the same group of people who want to push background checks for firearms, here here is this: Barnes allegedly had sex with two separate minors. Between January 2014 and November 2016, while she worked at Pacola High School, during yeah. the same time, the indictment states Barnes committed sexual battery against another minor unrelated to those she's accused of raping. So the question is, how did she get a position in the public school with this kind of criminal past? How is it that people still expect the government to do these things that they promise they're going to do? Yeah, it, it's, it's sad. Now, here's the other thing. In 2016, finally, there's an allegation. She's under investigation 
And so she does get suspended finally in 2016. But nothing happens to it. It took the Attorney General of Oklahoma doing his own grand jury to finally, last right. May, finally get an indictment on her. And so, and the, so the question is, what was up with the local DA? Yeah! I mean, why, why, did, why did it take the Attorney General, the State Attorney General, and the DA wasn't, wasn't dealing with yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, literally, you look at the arrest records, it was arrested by the Attorney General on this one. Right. Right. You know, and uh, here's the cool thing. i got to give props to, to this uh, judge. She's actually a hired judge, special judge, in uh, LaFleur County. Uh, Jenna McBee, or at least she was known as Jenna back when she went to Carl Albert State College. She actually is a former Miss Carl Albert State College and competed over here at Maybe Center for Miss Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Now, yeah, she's just a decent person. In fact, she still is a mentor to pageant contestants today. And, uh, but here's the thing, she knows how to hold women responsible for their actions, or at least she's starting to show it here, okay? So I gotta give her props on this, and doing what seems no male judge in this state has done much lately. If you look at the article that I posted here, um, I actually referenced an article a year ago that several talk radio stations picked up about all the lenient sentences on female teachers. Mm -hmm. Male teachers, Tom, are likely to get in excess of 10 years the first time they get uh, you know, convicted of something like this. But I show a picture of who's who. I've got, what, 10 women here who got an average of less than three years. Three of them actually got by with no jail time at all, for having sex, right. with underage boys that they were in under their care as a teacher in public schools. So. Yeah, so a punchline to this. Last year, the Oklahoma Department of Education ordered the closure of the Pecola Public Schools oh, for, yeah. for their gross financial mismanagement. More yeah. funding! More funding! <laughs> but uh, the nearby public school districts were expected to assume the role of providing common education to the affected population, but yep. Epic Online Charter Schools decided to step in. Yeah. Save the day and offer to absorb the public debt and provide an online educational option for the district. Thank you once again, Epic Online Journal. Yeah, yeah, you know, props to them. Um, you know, the good people down there, Pecola, that's right on the Arkansas border um, uh, in, you know, what we call Little Dixie, or right. the northern part of it. And, you know, good folk there, but gosh, you know, this is, you know, corruption. I just... I, there's something about, watch this judge. Yeah. I think she's got something that a lot of other people don't have, and, and I appreciate her for it, and I appreciate her holding women actually to an equal standard to men in Oklahoma. Yeah. If you want to know what, uh, a woman who knows how to empower women and hold them accountable, I think we're seeing it in this mm. judge. And again, she's not elected. She was hired by the chief uh, district uh, judge there. There you go. So, anyway. Move on to a story from Constitutional Grounds. Just a recap. Tom McKay, your host, you're watching 3D Politics. Mm -hmm. I got David Van and David Oldham right here with me <clears throat> from Constitutional Grounds. This is covering the UPS uh, in Florida. There was a, a robbery of a Regent Jewelry Store. And it wound up in a shootout with a UPS driver and innocent bystander dying on the afternoon of Thursday, December 5th, 2019. At least two perpetrators robbed a Regent jewelry store in the South Florida city of Coral Gables. Police responded to the silent alarm triggered by store employees. At some point, they hijacked a UPS driver and his vehicle. They held the driver hostage during the chase, which lasted 20 to 25 minutes. If you've seen the video, if you've seen the dust fly when the bullets go, tell us about oh, it. Oh, it, 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 what caught my attention about it was the fact that two innocent people died. The, the, the UPS driver taken, was taken hostage and his, his truck hijacked, carjacked. And um, you, I started watching the videos and there's a robber driving the truck. It's not the, the UPS driver driving the truck. There's probably a law against that. Well, <laughs> just, 
it's to get it policy. Has its license. It's a get but, policy, but the, I'm sure. But, but the the um, but the point was that when the truck came to a stop in uh, in rush hour traffic up to a stoplight and they got stuck, there was just nowhere to go. Right. The police just started swarming over the truck. And at that point in time, there began a shootout, and there were lots of shots that flew. Now, if you go to the post, uh, which is up on 3D Politics, you will see pictures of the UPS truck, and they shot through the truck blindly. There is no possible way that you can know what was in there where they were shooting and from the angles you were shooting from. And I sh picked out some pictures that would show that these people were in places that, that they had, they were just shooting blindly through this truck. Works in Call of Duty, you know. Well, well see, that's the thing. If you were in a war does. zone, if you are playing a, a video game, that is completely different. But the... What, what struck me, and, and my first thought, was Betty Shelby. Because my argument and my problem with the Betty Shelby shooting here in, in Tulsa mm -hmm. was, was the same as the overreaction and the shooting of, um, of the, the deaf man in Oklahoma City mm -hmm. at, the, um, at the movie theater. Mm -hmm. Was these guys came in and using bad tactics and mm. bad judgment ended up killing people who otherwise wouldn't have wouldn't be dead and who were not afforded their fourth and fifth amendment rights protections right but then beyond that the tactics caused the shootout quite frankly mm -hmm. definitely now, because now now that does not do not you're done with robbery. As, as, <laughs> as condoning the robbers. Sure, sure. The robbers had no say in it, no, no part in this. Yeah. But what you see, and you see this especially in California, where they have deliberately, they, they stop a great distance behind everything. Yeah. They get out their long guns, and they, they stay at a distance. They do felony stop procedures where they get everybody to come out walk backwards with their hands up in the air and, mm -hmm. and everything, and they walk back blindly so you don't know where you're going, and they do it one at a time while everybody else covers, and and they clear the area, they let everything clear rather than rushing and start a shootout. Because the guy who, the, the second, well, first, if you watch the video, you sadly see the, the UPS driver get hit and, and dive out of the truck trying to get away. And maybe fall falling dead, but the point is that that there's that. But the other guy is in one of the cars. You can see in the in the aerial photos, you can see all these black cars. And one of those black cars was this poor man uh, uh, who was was ultimately killed. And in one of the videos, it shows a a, a video taken from a cell phone. And all of a sudden, the, the picture goes wonky. It's because this man's car comes in and crashes into theirs. Okay, but I'm, so, I'm a little confused here. Sure. Your, your narrative, uh, yeah, like, sure you're confused. You're well, David, no, 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 you're no. David <laughs> Of course you are. Um, <laughs> so, but but my, my question, okay, how many uh, villains, shall I say, were involved in this? Was it just a lone uh, hijacker? or were uh, there, there were two robbers two that... Robbers. that Hijacked the the truck. Okay, um, and you're seeing one uh, one of those robbers then followed in another car. No, no, there were there were, to my knowledge, there were two robbers total. Mm -hmm. The whole time they both hide. They they left in their own truck or a stolen truck or whatever. For whatever reason, they switched to this UPS truck. Gotcha. They hijacked the UPS truck. Okay. At that point, they started a. They were being followed by by police. You're right. Both robbers are in now in the in the UPS truck, UPS truck, and they come to this stop. Police start swarming. Okay. At the point they came to the stop, is immediately did the actual UPS employee get out? Then so he's being held hostage. No, he's being held hostage. Okay, From everything we can tell, it wasn't he wasn't free to leave. 
Okay, and you're saying then when that shootout started, the hostage was in the truck, but they were just blindly shooting into the truck? Yes. The police were? Yes. Okay. Here's, I'm going to compare this to a scenario in northern uh, Tulsa that happened about four years ago with a mentally ill man named Josh Bray uh, that the judge had given an order to detain for psychiatric evaluation. Okay. And in the, the county and the city cops kind of screwed this thing up. You know, and Josh just wanted to be left alone. He was dealing with a psychotic paranoia. And he goes walking down the street with some knives, a couple of knives. Oh, right, right. And then, you know, and the cops just, it's, here's the thing. I'm a little bit sympathetic of, David, and it applies to your scenario, but follow me. Is that when a scenario is developing instantly before your eyes, and you're a cop in your own car, it's hard to communicate to set up a roadblock or a deal like that, like you talked about, what would be ideal, clear the area out. And so when I watch with Josh Perret's situation, they're calling in for backup, and every cop car just shows up 15 seconds too late to end this peacefully. And finally, I, I see the dash cam of a cop pulling up, and Josh is walking in front of this convenience store, and he gets out, he yells, and Josh Beret turns around and he's like, I've got my knives, right? And then he walks into the convenience store. What does the cop do then? He shoots him shoots. execution style under the guise of, I did not know who was in that convenience store. And if I let him in, he might harm somebody. Right. The cop justified the murder. And you were with me when we talked to Kutzweiler right. about this. Right. Is that... It was the cop's ignorance that he used as the justification for shooting him. Correct. And now you're saying what happened in this UPS truck is they didn't care who was endangered. They were the ones endangering whoever happened to be in this UPS truck. Well, because they're just shooting through the panels of the truck. Well, they definitely were doing that. The, you know, who knows what all the... The, the thoughts going through the minds of the, the yeah, police. in the cloud of war. In, 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 and that's, <laughs> that's the point. It was the cloud of war. The, when you look at the videos, they are literally using innocent civilians and their cars as human shields. They didn't set it up that way. The scenario presented itself. No, no, they... No, they, no, no, the, yeah, the, yeah, police, please, the police yeah. moved in and they, they used created civilian... The scenario. civilian yeah. Vehicle. They that sure happened to be there. No, they well, sure yes. saw No, they did not storm OJ's Bronco on the getaway and get him down. Okay, mm -hmm. what they do? They stayed back for what five hours or something? Well, and that's the okay. Point. The slow chase. Well, let's understand. We're not in a military war with the UPS truck. It's supposed to be policing. Well, and and here's the thing. They were these cops were right on this truck's tail. The mm -hmm. entire time. Right. Now, the claim is that that the truck was shooting back at them. Now, we don't know for an absolute what actually happened because there's been no official word on any oh, of this. Okay, stuff. let me ask you this hypothetically. Right. If all of a sudden shots were coming out from the UPS truck to the cops. Right. That's a different story now. Well, but wait, what do you do as the cop? Do you, do you close the ground? Call in or or, or, <laughs> or do you or do you back off so that you're less likely to get hit or to less likely to endanger oh, the civilians? Well, that too. Whoa, 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 whoa. The first thing I do, I don't care whether I'm cop or anybody, is I find some hardened place of protection. No, mind you, this is while they're driving to begin with. Okay, we are not talking about the the. We're not talking about once they're stopped. Once they're stopped, nothing happens, and we we still don't know who fired the first shot. Whether it was the whether it was the 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 bad guys, well, the robbers, <laughs> or or the cops, and we don't know who okay. fired the fatal rounds that killed the innocents. Right. Okay. okay. But what we know was there was a hail of bullets from around nineteen cops. Okay. But uh, at least yeah. 19 cops, maybe yeah. more. That that was a hail of nearly 200 bullets, right? Flying with dozens of cars mm -hmm. surrounding the whole thing. They are closing in from both sides. Got everything going. 
and there is a, a crossfire going on. And when you hear the, the video from the car at the stop sign, at the stoplight across the way, you can hear the bzz, bzz, bzz of bullets rushing past. See, right. from, from the peace and constitutional grounds, when the police advanced on the truck, they escalated the situation to the shootout. It was at best reckless. It was at least grossly negligent. And yet the police chief of Coral Gables hailed the actions of the police, which are clearly militaristic. Well, and the, the real thing was that he was across... He was back in Coral Gables. This happened in Miramar. It, it, he, he wasn't even there. Was in, admitted in the in the press conference that he wasn't a, he wasn't a witness to, to anything. That yeah, well, they did a good job. Uh, but he knows. Okay. He knows full. Okay. Well, but he knows. Okay. He knows full okay. well that they did I, I want to quote <clears throat> Coonsweiler. I may get you. Sorry, Steve. I may get you in trouble for this, oh, but. Yeah. Uh, but, oh boy, uh, but he's going to do it anymore. No, I'm worried. <laughs> Not real sorry, but sort of sorry. But was it you and Steve said to us, he says, you ever notice since 9-11 that cops have spent a lot more effort and training on this SWAT maneuver, the yes. pseudo-militaristic uh, interdiction yes. kind of thing. And they're yes. all tooling up with the big armored vehicles and everything. And, and yet, Tom, I have to say, the military would say, no, that's not military. We are not that inept. <laughs> because this really probably, I'd say just about anybody who is going to take this training film and say, here's not how to do it. Well, I would hope so. And I hope yeah. that, that, that we end up getting there. I hope everybody will contact the Florida FBI and tell them that they want justice done for these uh, Mr. Odonias and uh, well, no, the Mr. FBI is a federal entity. They are investigating it because of the right. kidnapping aspect of the the, the car carjacking, mm. and and because there are so many in, um, police involved. But there were FBI on the scene because I I know I saw at least one FBI jacket or sure. or a thing with FBI on it. Mm -hmm. So they they'll, were involved. They'll, in, they'll always find a way to weasel themselves into any state. Well, there's government there, issue. Yeah. But the the my point is that that. It's this. It's this overly militaristic. It's this this mindset that we have to close the gap. Uh, my problem with Betty Shelby was that she had no business being at the corner of that van where she was, with being that close to him. Uh, certainly without backup, but certainly thinking that he was high on PCP or whatever. Um, uh, and she had no business being there because the only thing that you can do when you do that is is escalate to deadly force. Mm -hmm. There's virtually no other option at that point. And and the thing is, we used to take time with our people in in the five hour yeah. uh, OJ chase or this or that or you know. And it used to be we would we would take that time. Now it's like oh we got to have this done in five minutes. Once we come to a stop, it's like we got to get it done. And, and again, you watch places like California and Arizona, and they set they set up on these guys, and they wait them out. They might bring in the big SWAT military truck that you know yeah. is, is armored, yeah. so that they don't get shot. But they they sit right up on them, and they make sure that they disable the vehicle, and then they wait them out. Yeah, you know I mean, is it, is it different story, same militaristic man from uncle attack mode. Fort Worth police officer fatally shot. Tatiana Jefferson, just two months yes. ago, in her bedroom. Bedroom. In her we're bedroom. just going to gun down innocent civilians based on the fact that we've been trained. We've been uh, trained. Yeah. And, and no, that's why I brought this up. We are you're you're talking about you're talking about Texas, Florida, Oklahoma. We see the same thing happening even in California, where they still do some occasionally do some things mm -hmm. better, but um, but. We still see this kind of mindset, and it's everywhere, and mm. and it is it is a direct attack on the Constitution of the United yeah. States and and our rights protections. And the sad thing is, I don't know that these that these co that these police officers mm -hmm. have any compunction or yeah. a remorse or anything. For what they did, it's like, oh, just, you know. Yeah, I, I want to talk to that because I do spend time with police officers in training, particularly i involved in mental health. But I get a chance to open up in ways they won't talk about publicly. Okay. 
in that. Um, one of the things in my work in mental health is I have to tell these people, you're going to have to check your ego at the door when you're dealing with what you think may be a mental illness. In that uh, the militarism of our police forces, it, I mean, we've got great military when it comes to uh, probably some of the most powerful, effectively, you know, well-trained military. And it benefits greatly from using that masculine testosterone, I'm going to win kind of thing. Right. Well, you put that mindset back into a peace officer, uh, local law enforcement, and that where they feel like they're being defied. Right. See? And then all of a sudden, now their ego is being threatened. Right. And I had to tell them, listen, I don't care if it's a mental illness, you're going to have to check your ego at the door. Well, the thing is, you need to check your ego at the door whether you're dealing with mental illness or I not. Get that. Because we all have yeah. rights that are quite frankly... And this is the problem, though, the because top. that thing, and I don't apologize for being a man or for having testosterone, you know, it's that, it's that drive that says, I'm a protector, I'm, you know, right. I, I, I'm fine with that. But at the same time, don't make it about my ego. Right. And, and that's the thing you got to separate out. Everybody wants to be the hero, but everybody wants to go home that night to their, right. their wife and kids. So uh, I can understand why a cop on their instinct, you know, all of a sudden I'm being shot at, you know, I'm going to duck behind some car tire. Okay? And that's, that's just what you're going to do because that's what you have. Now, if there's a kid in an infant seat in the back seat by that car door... All of a sudden, now you're doing what we complained about the ISIS terrorists doing, using human shields. Well, that's exactly what happened here. I mean, you yeah. look at it, there's three cars lined up, and the guy in the back is trying to get out. Yeah. He's pushing the other two cars, literally pushing, and they are stacked up four deep on mm. his rear bumper yeah. on the backside of him. Yeah. He's just trying to get out of there, and yeah. he can't. Yeah. But they are, so. they, and by firing from there, what are they doing? Yeah. They're attracting fire back at them by with the, with, on the truck they yes just without the advancing point. on the truck yeah. then then the then we don't we we eliminate the cops as having contributed to okay. it at that we point even, it was pure, we, okay. purely the robbers this, this is important <laughs> i gotta follow up on how far had that chase proceeded until 20 to 25 months okay so that's probably gone from one local jurisdiction to another oh yes, oh, yes. okay so now you've got multiple police forces they haven't trained with each other and i'm telling you all it takes is one idiot cop to start shooting and they put all the other cops in all the public at well, risk and it could be just one bad actor. Well, and this this goes to because because when you when you see like the, the I mean the the famous chases that were always from California, right? Mm -hmm. Southern California. Yeah. What you saw was you saw there is a concerted and a in a trained effort throughout all of these different police forces, and generally um, the CHP would get the mm -hmm. Highway Patrol would get get take over. Because we usually enter the, you know, get on the freeways. Yeah. But all of the police, all of the various forces agree on this is how we're going to do it. I know. And, and so the point is that you don't get these maverick kind of things. But okay. the, the point is that, that this all happened or, or the cause of this yeah. happened at the training level. It happened at the at the policy level, it, uh, would, it happened all well before. Could, could be any of those, event. could be all of them, could be any or all. Or it could be that some guy who's on the force who just come back from his fourth tour in the Middle East and he had a bit of P PTSD kick in and a flashback and he just went back to, you know, uh, Muzul yeah, that's poor, that's, in his mind. Okay. And, and so he took it could be. Took poor, 18 of his buddies yeah, and, with it's, him. and it's poor hiring then and it's poor training and and so so they couldn't they couldn't screen this guy hey, here, look, here's a guy who's let me, let me this, this, this is the point the edge this is screen this guy this is why we have to have this discussion because because without militarism in the police force you don't have this question we don't have this discussion yeah. we have to we have to start talking about this and, and I've been amazed at the number, and quite frankly, the, 
the lack of the number of knee-jerk reactions. There have been okay. there, those out there with the posts that so, I put up about this. Okay, I was sitting down building a curriculum for a law enforcement continuing education thing with a uh, police officer who actually has a mental health, I think, master's degree. And I won't say who he is, but good guy. And I said, now, what happens to you guys when you need to see a good therapist to process through some of the hell you go through? Sure. And he says, you know, that's a tough deal. He said, I tell you why. Because, yeah, we're going to want to go see a therapist. You know, we want our insurance to cover it. But as soon as your insurance cover it, then your employer knows. Right. And he says, and then when it comes time for advancement in the department. You don't get it. Yeah. Well, because you actually did the right thing. And, uh, but here's, here's the thing. and that's a problem policy-wise where that sure. becomes a thing against them. Sure. So I said, what are you doing? You guys are going to love this part. He says, we have a number of friends in the community who are professional mental health therapists who are now retired. And they offer mm -hmm. to do all our counseling for us off the books. Yeah. Okay. And that, to me, is mm. that's... That's citizenship. Is that legal? No, that uh, is citizenship. You know, look, I go down there and train. I don't bill on board. I'm kidding. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> remember, yeah. remember, that's, it, it's like, that's a good thing, but there's probably a law against it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're good, but you're not Ambroso, okay? <laughs> who, does <laughs> the priest, who does the priest uh, confess to? <laughs> well, it, the, but the, that's, you know, it's, it's, the for me it's it's the the fact that we have we need to get control of our mm -hmm. police force again mm -hmm. we our police need to acknowledge um the fact that when these things happen mm -hmm. and the police make mistakes yeah they need to acknowledge it what you get is this knee jerk reaction blue line protection you know kind of a thing right. and my it's like country right okay. around my country yeah. oh, well do, do you see yeah. what happened these right four same concept around okay. my country yeah. oh well do, do you see what happened these four same concept do you see what happened at courthouse last week no. uh the black panther showed up no and they made a big to do and yeah the camera crews you know the local media showed up and they're all you know they probably wouldn't do half what they do the black panthers if they didn't have news media covering yeah right. oh yeah but they want they demanded to see steve coonsweiler Coonsweiler says no you make it a point just like everybody else i'm not gonna you know count out of this you know but here's the thing yeah, I talk to a lot of law enforcement, and they listen. And I'm tough on them too, Dave. But they'll listen to me because they know I'm. Not, they know I'm not just bitching about it. I'm actually trying to help fix it. Well, you know, when you're offering your time and your effort and your experiences, your expertise, um, they're going to appreciate that. Sure. And and just like the the mental health counselors who are retired now, they say, you know what? Let us help. You know, we're here. And you know, that's some of the best counselors. They've just and they've been practicing for 40 years. By God, I'll take that over somebody who just graduated the last sure. month. You know, and uh, that's part of fixing it is let's be a community again. You know, let's not just pick up the pickets and the, you know, bullhorns and stuff. Well, but I mean, let's sit down I mean, and talk yeah, about it. Let's, let, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like the, the, the Starbucks story from last mm -hmm. week. It is. It, it's like you can be a community if people are willing to be communal yes. and be the community. The right. problem is when you have tyrants mm -hmm. dictating, that's not community. And when they're wearing a badge, that is not community. They're not being... I, I and, and we that. need to, we as a community need to start acknowledging this so we can right. rein all this back in. Right. But, and, but all these people who are actually promoting, you know, our police at all costs, no matter what, yeah. no matter what they do, right. they're actually part of the problem. They're not being right. helpful toward the actual... And, and just like the people who say, well, if the black guy's a victim and the person who did it's white, then it's racism. And it's not always exactly. racism either. Exactly. You know, I, I'm just saying we have to remember we're going if we have a chance to start a dialogue, jump at that chance to start a dialogue. Of course. If it if it comes. 
you know, to close out this concept about the, the high-speed chase, essentially, mm -hmm. uh, back in the 30s, when the radio was basically now uh, a permanent uh, installation in America, uh, and before the cops were federalized, it's one of the things that has changed in the last uh, 100 years, mm -hmm. is that the local police departments are now federally funded. Mm -hmm. And so there's all this federalization and nationalization of the police force. But yeah. before that happened, the the lowly police uh, were going on their high-speed chases in the 30s, and there was all this danger to the public, mm -hmm. and people were having wrecks on these high-speed chases. And because there wasn't the funding for the local police, there was a public... A campaign that was made to provide radios for the police cars sure. with public funding. And why, why were we going to put radios in the police cars? Because it would do what? End the high speed chase. Because you can't outrun the radio, can you? Right. But they have radios in their cars, and we mm -hmm. still have the high speed chase. Now they have computers mounted right here when I can't even text. Uh, and yet they can gun down civilians. And they're playing war mm -hmm. uh, uh, without, they're not doing policing, they're playing war. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think one of the things I tried to bring up uh, three years ago in the political arena was the concept that the police are asked to do too much, mm -hmm. i.e. protect our lives. Yeah. We are not only have the responsibility, the right mm -hmm. to protect ourselves and our own mm -hmm. life, we have the responsibility to protect our own lives. So if each person would be responsible to protect their own lives, mm -hmm. then the policeman could just concentrate on property. Mm -hmm. Then we wouldn't be worried about the police saving our lives all the time. Sure. Yeah. And the police wouldn't feel the need to chase you down in your UPS truck and mm -hmm. gun you down. And, and of course, it could have been much worse, I'm sure, is mm -hmm. what they'll say. <laughs> yeah. Right. But again, we paid for radios in the 30s for the policemen so that well, we would end the high-speed chase, yeah. and that was a damn lie. Well, and, and to, to your point exactly, um, go, to the, go to the look at one of the, the bottom link on the, on the post, and you'll find the YouTube video of, a, of the stepfather of Mr. Ordonez, who is the UPS driver, who uh, condemns what the police did and mm -hmm. explains why, because... Um, if they hadn't done what they did, he, he is fairly confident yeah. that his son... The police have the power of the state. They have they control the highways. They control the movement of the rest of the public. Well, there was no reason to move in on the truck at that time. Well, I, there's still a lot of questions to be answered. Will you have sure. an update next week on this? Because I think there's going to be a lot... I, I don't know things. that there will be much between now and then, but we'll... we'll I'm certainly going to be following it. Yeah, good, so good. If there, as... As um, new information comes available, you know what? We'll, we'll a, a government that's big enough to fully protect you is big enough to fully control you. Yeah. And so you've got one with the other. I mean, if they can railroad a citizen like Trump, uh, like they're doing, they can railroad anyone. Uh, one last story uh, to finish off the evening. Once again, Tom McKay here with 3D Politics, David Van, David Oldham, and uh, some of the dangers that the police involved in. This has just happened last uh, night or day before yesterday from December 8th, police, Arkansas officer ambushed and executed while sitting in his patrol vehicle in the station lot. Fayetteville, Arkansas. Fayetteville, Arkansas police officer was shot and killed in the police station's parking lot. Saturday night, December 7th, the department said in a statement, evidence shows officer Stephen Carr, patrol officer who had served the department for more than two years, was ambushed and executed while sitting in his patrol vehicle Police department said. So again, uh, plenty more to this story. I'm sure this was obviously a hit. Makes me wonder what what was going on, uh, what the motives were. That it just it it's there's there's something wrong. Right? Clearly, more to this story. Yeah. Two officers heard gunshots behind the station around 9:42 p.m. According to police, in the parking lot, they found an armed man later identified as 35 year old London Phillips. Confrontation ensued. The officers fired at Phillips, who was injured. Officers gave medical attention to the wounded men, and paramedics were called. The car and Phillips both died. So we don't, we won't know. So two men died. Car, uh, the police, uh, Stephen Carr, the police officer, and Phillips, the man who shot him, both are oh. dead. Okay. Well, we we assume he shot him. He was at least found in their apparently, lot. yes, allegedly shot. The conference who was injured, police said officer. 
we don't we don't again there's it's it's so little information yet. I know. And yeah. and I've seen this kind of scenario go all kinds of different directions. Right. You know, you, these men have families, and yeah. I don't want to speculate. They probably haven't even buried them yet. But uh, oh no, no, yeah. So this is this yeah. is a this is the quandary that we're that we're in is finding good men to do good work, and then having their good work tainted by idiots in Florida that want to storm a UPS truck. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. it's it's it's, a, a, well, I, it's a federalized policing is a bad idea. Well, and this is this is why. It's so important that we all uh, become uh, more aware or make ourselves acquainted with constitutional civics. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say that better, more than civics, just civics in general, mm -hmm. because that can be any number of things. But constitutionally based civics, um, because, because quite frankly, the police that I talk to are completely ignorant, uh, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. of their responsibilities under the Constitution. You, you know what? Would, if I got you a ride-along with a police officer, would you take it? Sure. Would you behave? No. <laughs> I don't mean that. What do you mean by behave? No. no. I, 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 you know, some of my, Hold them, those nothing about some of my police officer friends or those of you who know him, get in touch with me. Let's see if we can't uh, give him a insights from in the squad car Happy and to. see what it, the daily grind is well, like. Well, because, uh, because yeah. again, the there is, it, it's all about mindset before you get in the car. And it, we right. talked about that Stephen Mills. It's your yeah. mindset whether yeah. you're going to be a peace. Are you a warrior or a servant? That's right. And are I, you a, a peace officer or are you a a, a law enforcement officer? Yeah. And there you it, go. Those, are, those are, those are, radically different yeah. mindsets and ways that you approach the job. For right. me, I'm going to approach everything with a mind to constitutionality as best as you can. I mean, sure, there, there might be moments that you make mistakes. If I could get you a chance to hijack a delivery truck next week, would you... <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the other day I was at Quick Trip and I'm walking out and the officers come in and I say, hey, how's your day going? You know, he says, well, thank you for asking. I'm fine. Right. You know, right. um, uh, just because <laughs> these are people that they can only benefit from having good people talking to them. Uh, you know, they need our perspectives. Well, they do. And, and this was this is interesting that you bring that up because I've had discussions with um with police officer friends of mine yeah and i am amazed um at the corruption that is in well, some of these departments yeah, yeah. Um, i mean oh, the yeah. corruption just the, the 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 mismanagement and all of the corruption that goes along with that the cya the, you know the, what? all of this sort of yeah. stuff the bad orders telling people to do things that are actually illegal hey, get this I talked to one man, his friend of mine, you probably know him, his mother went into law enforcement later in her life, and she saw corruption in her department and reported it. And you know what? She got in a bad situation where she needed backup, and you and know how it. they punished her? They just left her there to right. deal with it herself. Yeah. That's right. the kind of hell. And you know what? It's those kind of people you got to get rid of. Not, these were not the ones she reported on who did it. It no, was everybody else. It was everybody else. It was the blue is for the blue. Well, and that's why yeah. I am trying to get people, I, I often speak in, uh, hyperbolically, mm -hmm. um, but I, yeah. I do so somewhat strategically because mm -hmm. it's it's like, folks, the problem is much deeper than you think it is. Sure it is. Um, and it's the point I'm trying to make, it, and, and maybe I harm myself by speaking hyperbolically, but the point is, it is... It, it, it is, our departments are rife with this mindset. Yeah. And it's everywhere. It's not just, you know, isolated spots. It's the isolated spots that don't have yeah. this. And here's the thing. A lot of things get corrupted in our society because people are more concerned about their career than about the job that their career is. Tom, I want to say this. Oklahoma, for about 10 years dabbled in the idea of township government. That's, we're actually in Fry Township. We're the yeah. township elders tonight. So, well, we... Yeah. Every Monday. <laughs> yes. And, and uh, but in Minnesota, where I'm from, my, uh, my relatives are on township governments. And my grandfather, for many, many years, 
held the office of township constable. You know what that is? Mm -hmm. Constable means cop. Right. Okay? And he was just the farmer that when somebody needed help, you know, he was kind of like raising the posse. It was that kind of yeah. mentality. Right. The, the, and he didn't make any money doing it. But right. it was his so contributing, sorry. yes, he was contributing to his township government by doing that. Now, there was something in it for him, though. He was the biggest deer poacher in the township. <laughs> <laughs> you could have just cut that <laughs> out of the <laughs> Dang it. Yeah, I love my grandpa. <laughs> always, always taking more than his limit. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? The, 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 the cattle are going to fight. A limit is a limit would be proper proper regulation. Yeah. <laughs> Not the license. But Anything the else yeah. before we get out of no, here? No, it's been great. It's been a great show tonight. Tom yeah. McCain, your host with 3D Politics. i got David Van, SoonerPolitics.org, David Oldham, ConstitutionalGrounds.com. We'll catch you again next week for another exciting edition of 3D Politics. Yeah.